One. There it is. Uh -oh. All right. Let's see it. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today we're talking about one of our newest products, and this is the Simple Timer for Staging. And this is designed for staging a two-stage rocket like this one here, where the something other than direct staging has to ignite the upper stage, because this one obviously we can't get anything up in there. So this is really good for composite motors in your upper stage. And with me is Brian Houghton. He's the developer of the Simple Timer, and he's going to explain how to use it and what makes it special. Uh, yeah, well, as Tim mentioned, there's uh, a bit of a problem if you don't want to put a full flight computer and everything in your, in your rocket and you just want to be able to do a simple staging operation. And so we've developed this timer um, to uh, accomplish that, and it's basically just a timer that runs on a, it's got a two ac or three axis accelerometers and three axis gyroscopes in there. And uh, it's a generation two timer, the first generation timers that some of you might be familiar with. Um, those are a little sketchy because they can be set off in all kinds of different directions and you can get your sustainer flying sideways and all kinds of other things. Whereas this timer has a lot of built-in protections in it. Um, it looks for, um, to make sure your rocket's aimed up, for example, when, when you launch it. Um, it also looks for if the rocket goes unstable and starts tumbling or spinning about not the, not the axis around the rocket, but any other, you know, off-angle stuff. And, that, and if it does that, then it'll disable the timer. If it gets too tilted one way or another uh, to prevent your sustainer from going off in some dangerous direction. So That's cool. So um, how long of a timer is it, you know, um, and how do you set it? Well, you can set it. It's got basically the user interface. There's a red and a green LED on here and a little program button that you can use to set the time with. Um, and you can set the time from anywhere from 0.7 seconds um, all the way up to 99.9 .9 seconds. Um, and you have to have some kind of time base if you want a really accurate setting. It's quite easy actually to get, you know, within a tenth of a second if you have uh, like a metronome or a large clock with a sweep second hand. So you can get into you know the half second areas and stuff okay. like that, um, and then to set it, you just simply push the button down and, and hold it down for as amount of time that you want, and then when you release the button, it remembers that amount of time and it uses it when it detects a launch then um, to go ahead and start your upper stage. Okay, and how does it detect launch? Uh, it detects launch from looking at the accelerometer data. Um, and it, it needs to see either two Gs for like a half a second, um, but it, it, if, if you have a very powerful motor, it'll de actually detect a launch a little sooner. So there's, uh, we have a, an advanced launch detection and flight kind of trajectory algorithm in there to make sure that the launch is up and um, that it is a good launch and it uh, pre prevents the timer from going on like if you get motor chuffs and things like that. Um, and then all the protections come into play once it detects a good launch. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of it. Um, can you walk us through actually powering it up and seeing what the LEDs look like so that a person would understand how they set their timer? Uh, yeah, we can give it a try see if we can see the LEDs here. Um, basically all you got to do is hook power to it and you can hook anywhere between a single cell LiPo like this one uh, up to 15 volts to it. Um, now when it first turns on, both the red and the green LEDs are going to be on indicating that it's in uh, self-test mode. And then it goes through and flashes three digits at you, um, which are the set time. Um, and zero is represented as 10. And then it'll do a pause, um, and then it'll flash the battery voltage at you in the same three-digit format with two significant digits and a decimal. And then once it's done doing that, it goes into a mode where both of the LEDs are flashing. And if you push the button during that time, um, what will happen is it'll actually test the timer. It'll start counting down and it'll set the output charge off. Um, if you let it go past there, then it goes into waiting to detect the launch, So, uh, which is what it's in right now. I don't know if you can see the little LED, but it's tipped sideways right now. This, this, this has to always go up. That's part of the safety features in it. Um, and if we get it up within 45 degrees, you can maybe see the LED turns green. 
Uh, so anywhere in a cone up here of 45 degrees, it'll be green. And if the LED is green, it is ready to launch. So. Okay. So the when it flashes the three digits, the first digit might be a zero if it's like for a five seconds. So the, the first digit would be zero, five, and then maybe another zero. Yes. Right. Okay. And then the same for the battery voltage. Right. Correct. Okay, so then if you wanted to test your igniter to make sure your system is working so that it will fire off an igniter, um, how do you go about doing that? Well, in order to test an igniter, um, <clears throat> basically what you got to do is just hook an igniter to it. Let's see if we can get it unplugged here. We happen to have a little E-match here. Uh, it's all wound up, but the orange wires are the wires that you hook your, your, uh, your E-match or igniter to. And you can also put this into a terminal block, so if you don't want to twist them together, you can just uh, screw them down. Yeah, any, any way to connect the wires together, you can... If, you, if you're going to wire wrap them like this, I'd recommend you probably tape them so they don't short out. Now, this unit's protected against short circuits on the output. It outputs a pulse for two seconds. Um, a lot of the earlier generation timers would only output a one-second pulse. Um, but some of the igniters are a little harder to ignite, so we did a two-second pulse. So second you need pulse. a special battery for these then, too? Um, well, you can use a single-cell lithium polymer like this, but you, m you need to ground test it because if it's a small one like this, this is only a 400 milliamp hour battery, uh, you might have to make sure and take the board out, this protection board in here, which is, you got to be careful when you do that. Um, but if you have a bigger lithium ion cell, maybe a thousand milliamp hours or something, you can probably go ahead and just leave the board in and you can hook nine volt batteries to it. Uh, you know, a five volt nickel metal hydride, anything between 3.6 and 15 volts. Okay. And you, you can get the batteries without the boards on them from Apogee Components if you need one, if you don't want to take it off yourself. Okay, so, so now we're going to go test this. So. Okay, so we have our igniter. This timer happens to be set for five seconds. Um, so what we're going to do is just plug it in and it'll go through its uh, sequence, its startup sequence. Have we, uh, have we tested, are we, did we set the timer yet? Let's go ahead and set the timer. Oh. Let's make it four seconds. Okay, we can, uh, in order to set the timer, what you do is when it's in self-test mode at the very beginning, when both the red and the green LEDs are on, you push the little button. Okay. And then what will happen is both the LEDs will go out and it will be sitting there waiting for you to push the button for a second time. Okay. And then you just hold the button down for 4 seconds or 10 seconds or 99 seconds, whatever you want. And as soon as you let the button off, it records that amount of time. Okay. So it's a really simple way to set the time. So you're going to press the button twice. Yeah. So they're both on now, so I just press the button. Now I don't know if you can actually see it, but both the LEDs are out. so. And as opposed to doing this really accurately with, you know, a sweep second end or anything, I'm just going to kind of count. So I'm going to push the button. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but, uh, oh, wait, I messed it up here. Might have to edit that part out. You can just unplug it. Yeah, it that's if over. you want to start over, you just, uh, so I push the button. Both LEDs are out. Now I'm going to push the button and go one, two, three, four, and then let the button up. Now it'll flash a red or a green letting you know if it's a valid time and then it goes back to the start where it'll start flashing how long the timer's set for. There's 10, 2, 3, 4, 3, three 2, 3, 5. So I actually got 3.5 seconds. 3.5. Okay. Not bad. Yeah. And now it's flashing the battery voltage to us. So the first one should be a zero because it's a 3.7. Right. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, three point eight volts. And now it's flashing both the red and the green. And if we were to press the button in that mode, it would actually start the timer timing down for three point five seconds and then fire off the E match. Okay. All right, let me get the E match in view here so you can see it and we'll fire it off one more time. Okay, if you want. So oh, yeah. it's uh to you gotta recycle the power to it every time to start it over again once it gets all the way through its mode. But now it's flashing its uh, time set, which is going to be 3.5 seconds. So it remembers the time when you disconnect the battery, so you don't have to do, keep doing it over and over again. Yeah, whatever time you, you leave set, it'll keep it for 
indefinitely, actually. Here's a eight, three point eight second or vet volts. Yeah, there's the three for the eight. Now, as soon as both of these start flashing, I'm going to push this button. I think I missed it. Yeah, yeah you missed it. Because if it, it turns green and he goes vertical, that's ready to launch. Yeah, we'll have to have to start over again. Sorry about that. But it doesn't stay in test mode very, or it doesn't stay in enable mode to test it very long. It's only like a second or two, and that's why I kind of missed it here because we don't want it to accidentally go off. And so you, you have to be paying attention if you want to test it. You got to be on the ball. And now it's flashing its battery voltage to us again. Three point eight. And you can see it's counting down two, three, and it fired it off in cool. the time that we set. Okay, so what happens um, if something goes wrong? Like, say, you, you, you know, it detected the rocket going sideways and it turned itself off. Um, what happens then? Uh, well, then you'll need something to back up your sustainer to get the parachute out or it'll, <laughs> it'll on dart in. Um, so you'll, you'll want to consider that. Um, but what the, what the timer will do is if it detects a good launch and fires off your upper stage correctly and everything, then at the end, uh, the, the red light will just be on solid. If it detects any errors, like it tilted too much or it didn't have enough speed or anything like that, then it'll flash an error code at you here that's explained in the directions, um, and it'll tell you why it didn't, you know, what shut it off, so you can correct that before your next flight. Okay, and then so you lose your rocket and you find it like two days later and your battery's dead, you can plug it in and you can still get that error code out? Yeah, if it does find an error code, what it'll do is it puts it at the beginning. If there is no error code, then when you turn the unit on, it will go into its self-test mode where you can set the timer where both LEDs on and then it'll start flashing the green LED to show you what the time is and the battery voltage and all that. But if there was an error on the last flight, it saves that and it will actually put it in the front so you will see the flashing error code at the, then and it'll keep that error code until you actually have a good flight. So okay. you can turn it off and on as many times as you want and get the status from the last flight. So that explains the simple timer for staging from Apogee Components. Um, thank you, Brian, for coming and explaining it to us. Um, if you need more information, uh, come to the Apogee Components website. Our address is www.apogeerockets.com. If you have questions, you can leave them here on YouTube, or you can email us at the Apogee website, and we'll put those into the frequently asked questions so that future readers can figure out and engage in our conversation. So thank you for coming. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry, building techniques, and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com.